Good morning, everybody. Uh, a warm welcome from the CYCA for the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race weather briefing. Uh, we would normally go straight into the weather briefing this morning, but I understand there has been some real issues, of course, yesterday, and people would be keen to get an update on where we are with uh, managing the PCR testing result issue. So what we've decided to do is go straight to our race chairman, uh, Lee Goddard, to give us an update and to answer any questions that you might have. Over to you. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, all the uh, race participants all, and all the officials and all those who have got us here. So first thing, race on. So, of course, we're looking forward to this. But we have a great day. Lines are being prepared, uh, JVW, Young Endeavour, all are out there ready to go. So that's fantastic. But we actually are very uh, empathetic and uh, very conscious that it was a tough day for many people yesterday on Christmas Day as they were considering about their um, COVID um, results when they were coming through and also what that meant for actually racing. And a couple of the obstacles had to make it uh, tough decisions that we worked with them. Before I just go through an update on the COVID protocols, I just remind you that uh, it's, uh, it's about being risk aware, not risk averse. Uh, we are working with the system. We ask you to do that with us as well, whether it be the New South Wales authorities, um, the medical authorities, and in particular the Tasmanian government, Tasmanian authorities. And we will work with them to make sure that we have a safe, a fair, a fast race, and that all the COVID considerations are in place. But I just want to reiterate what Commodore Noel has just said. Thank you for your patience and understanding as we try to work through the delays in returning the PCR results, of course. Now, we're not in a bubble. Um, most Australians at the moment are experiencing the same thing. We've communicated uh, yesterday with the Tasman Police, and we have approval for crew members that have been PCR tested but not have not yet received the results to start the race. Can I just repeat that again? So we have had communication with the Tasmanian Police, who's our main agency that we're dealing with, and have approval for crew members on any boat that have been PCR tested but have not yet received the result to still start the race. Uh, you are still required to complete the Tasman Travel um, uh, AU notice, knowing that, uh, knowing that you are back vaccinated and that you will have a negative test. And when submitting your, uh, your required declaration regarding the Tasman Travel and Associated Documents, Please list any crew that are yet to receive their PCR test result. You know, you know where the declaration can be found, of course, and if need be, come back to the selling office. Um, but we don't want to be last minute. We need to make sure that it actually is correct. It, uh, as results are received during the race, can we ask that, the, uh, that you know, as the negative results come through, that you contact Tara, our selling manager, and the details for in the selling instructions and number to make sure we actually understand the status of your crew throughout or make, make it much easier for us. In the event that a crew member returns a positive test, you will be required to retire immediately. And that's the reality. So any positive test, as the PCR test come through, you will be required to retire. Um, we are still uh, confirming absolutely, but, uh, but that should a boat finish the, uh, um, the, the race and still have an outstanding crew test result, um, it's possible that they be a requirement to have a PCR test again in Hobart and isolate until they receive the result. However, we are working through this as we speak with the Tasmanian authorities. Uh, again, I, uh, I know this would be uncomfortable for some, uh, but we are working through it. Can I just remind you again of just the COVID protocols for today? Obviously, here we are, race day. It's a fantastic uh, to be here down at the CYCA. Mind you, only, three, only, only crew members and three shore crew are allowed on the CYC Marina until 10 a.m. today and you will need your crew pass to gain access. Please say your goodbyes with family as you dock off the club. I know many of you would be doing that anyway. I'm sure you have lodged your declaration and that all your crew, um, in terms of uh, your status with regard to your PCR results, and of course, mind you again, complete the Tassie travel declarations. Again, in race, you know, as I can't emphasize enough, advise race forms if any crew have COVID symptoms throughout the race at the Tasman Island EGA, uh, call you must report if any crew have symptoms, obviously through the Hobart Race Control, but in particular JVW on the water and of course alternately our young endeavour. Follow your COVID plan. They've been really good plans, which we've accepted, so just follow those. And I remind you at the finish, don't get off the boat. Obviously safety first, use a sensible application if you do need to jump ashore and, and, and tether to, you know, or with lines, etc. as well. But as a standing rule, don't get off the boat. Um, you'll really need to do the RAP, the uh, rapid uh, antigen test on the boat uh, as, as a crew on arrival at the marina. 
These tests will be provided to you immediately when you birth by our volunteers. Each crew member will need to complete the test on the boat and then the owner is then required to complete a declaration that all crew members have returned a negative result. And of course, this is Amendment 1 to the SIs, which was issued a few days ago. Again, do not get off the boat. And mind you, in the event that a crew member has a positive result uh, during that initial uh, test when you arrive in Hobart, you are required to advise through your declaration and a crew member um, uh, will need to get yeah, a PCR test and isolate in a hotel or the appropriate place um, as uh, previously stated. With regard to the advice that I provided today about starting the race without your PCR results, we will not be doing more, uh, an additional amendment. So Amendment 1 to the uh, SIs still stands. It's uh, not protestable by any other boat. Um, basically, it's for the consideration of the committee um, with regard to uh, boats uh, and crew and, um, and owners follow these protocol rules uh, absolutely. If there's any questions, I think post the, uh, unless we want to go straight into any questions now, do Q&A um, uh, function. If not, post that Gabby's uh, weather brief. Uh, again, uh, brace on. It's going to be a great day, but we do uh, completely empathise that it's uncomfortable for some while they're waiting for the PCR results when we are working through this. Back to you, Commodore. Well, thank you very much, Lee. Uh, are there any questions anybody has for Lee before we move on to the weather briefing? Uh, it does not look like there are. So uh, Gabrielle Woodhouse from the Bureau of Meteorology is here with us again today. Thank you, Gabrielle, for being available um, over your holiday season. Uh, we look forward to having an update on the latest weather. Thank you. Thank you. Bear with me while I just share my slides. Hopefully they're all um, now visible and uh, we'll get cracking on what we're expecting for, for the weather brief at the moment. So, oh no, my system's just having a little hissy fit and is refusing to move along in the slides. Um, there we go. So the current mean sea level pressure analysis chart from the middle of the night last night shows that trough has been moving along the southern portion of the New South Wales coast. And we can see a cold front um, that's to the south of the Tasman um, Sea there and headed towards New Zealand. Further west though, we've got that high pressure system to the well to the south of uh, WA. And that high pressure system will be the, the main thing that we're going to keep an eye on um, throughout the race. But um, if we take a little closer look at the current satellite pictures, um, what we can see, and this is an image from just uh, about half an hour ago, we can see that trough is just sitting around the northern suburbs of, New South of Sydney at the moment. And behind it, we've got a fair amount of low cloud and potentially a little bit of hazy conditions. What we can also see on this satellite picture um, in a couple of red and, and yellow sort of dots are some lightning strikes. So we are seeing a couple of very isolated thunderstorms over the water. Um, you can see the one that's uh, well offshore, um, well to the east of uh, Ulladulla there. So what we're looking at uh, for today and tomorrow is that trough is going to move a little bit further north by tonight um, and weaken a little bit. And further south, we're going to see that high pressure ridge really start to become the dominant feature across um, Tasmania in, into the southern waters of New South Wales. And that story persists going into Tuesday and Wednesday. What we can see by Wednesday evening though, if we uh, look at the images on the, on the bottom of the screen there, is the high pressure system has started to spread a little bit further east and starting to develop that high over the Tasman Sea. So that's going to mean that we'll see some winds starting to turn a little bit more northerly during the second half of next week. If we take a closer look at uh, conditions at the moment, we've got a little bit of cloud at the moment, but as we saw in that satellite picture, we're expecting the uh, cloud to start to increase further and uh, potentially see a little bit of hazy conditions and maybe a light shower or two. There is still a chance that we could see a thunderstorm offshore, um, like what we saw on, on that satellite picture, but the risk is uh, relatively low. This, uh, as we get into the afternoon though, what we see is those uh, southerly winds persisting and increasing. So initially they're going to be about 15 to 20 knots, but once you round the heads, it's possible that they'll get up to about 25 knots. During the afternoon and evening, that it's likely that we'll end up seeing some uh, winds starting to get up towards 30 knots. Um, so that's why there is a um, strong wind warning for, for much of the New South Wales coast for today. What we'll see later tonight though, is those winds start to ease off as that trough moves a little bit further north. And uh, what we'll see instead is some southeasterly winds starting to push in along the southern portion of the New South Wales coast. So generally we're going to see winds around that 15 to 25 knot mark, but we will still see uh, you know, some of those winds locally reaching 30 knots. It's more likely that we'll see those sorts of wind strengths a little bit further offshore. Um, and, and what we'll see in terms of the 
these and swell is significant wave heights anywhere from around a metre and a half to two and a half metres and a southerly swell of generally about one to one and a half metres um, overnight. Those strong winds um, and that strong wind warning at this point looks as though it'll ease sometime uh, later tonight or in the early hours of Monday morning. Now on Monday morning we are expecting those winds to turn a little bit more southeasterly, um, particularly uh, across the Bass Strait and into the southern part of the New South Wales coast. We are still going to see reasonable wind strength, so along the New South Wales coast, generally 15 to 25 knots, but they will start to weaken later in the morning. Further south across the Bass Strait, generally uh, south to southwesterly, 10 to 15 knots, but they're going to turn more east to southeasterly during the very early part of Monday morning. By Monday afternoon, though, uh, we'll start to see well, a fairly similar story in, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, along the Tasmanian coast, though, we'll start to see those uh, southwesterly winds um, for the southern portion of, of the Tasmanian coast, particularly um, south of about uh, Coles Bay, where we're looking at wind strengths about 15 to 20 knots. And as you'd expect uh, with that sort of a wind regime, as you uh, turn um, to go up through Storm Bay and into the Derwent Estuary, we'll start to see those winds turn a little bit more southeasterly and, and decrease a little bit. One thing to note, uh, south of uh, Tasman Island, we are going to see a reasonable uh, southwesterly swell, so generally about two to three metres. For the rest of, uh, well, basically north of there, that southwesterly swell is going to be a fair bit less, so generally about one to one and a half metres. Um, and as you'd expect, with uh, those uh, 15 to 20 knots um, in the south there and, and that swell, we are expecting the significant waves to be a little bit bigger once you uh, pass to the south of Tasman Island. Um, on Monday, though, uh, once you've get further south of New South Wales. We're expecting generally part, partly cloudy skies, predominantly you know, some nice sunny patches, but not much in the way of rainfall um, on the cards. And that story is going to persist Monday night and into Tuesday um, and pretty much for the rest of the week uh, as you head towards Tasmania. So in terms of winds on, on Monday night, we will see those winds um, decreasing uh, th throughout the night. Um, and so along the New South Wales coast, Initially, they'll be about 15 to 25 knots, but they'll start to um, drop down to about 10 knots um, in the middle part of the night. Across the Bass Strait, um, it's a bit of an issue at the moment in terms of exactly what wind direction we're going to see. Um, initially, they'll be that east to southeasterly, but they may become fairly light and variable on, on Monday night or early Tuesday morning. Likewise, uh, along the Tasmanian coast, if you're inshore, it looks as though we could see some uh, overnight land breezes and you know, winds generally uh, light westerly inshore. Um, but further south, particularly south of Tasman Island, we are still looking at those southwesterly winds um, and uh, you know, starting to turn a little bit more southerly uh, through uh, Storm Bay and up the Doan Estuary. Tuesday morning, it's a very similar uh, sort of picture um, and th there's not a huge amount of change in, in the story for, for what it for what we are expecting. Um, we are still going to see those southwesterly winds uh, across the southern portion of the Tasmanian coast along the Bass Strait, light and variable. And during the day, at some point, potentially tending a little bit more southeast to northeasterly. By Tuesday night, um, it's going to be a fairly similar story, although we could see um, some northwesterly winds um, uh, across part of the Bass Strait there. So it's an in interesting one in terms of exactly what wind direction we're going to see and that's due to the um, ridge of high pressure that's going to be sitting across there. Likewise we'll still be seeing that uh, southerly swell still going to generally be about one to one and a half metres but to the south of Tasman Island it's still going to be a little bit uh, um, higher than that. By Wednesday morning uh, this is when we're going to see that high pressure system starting to develop um, over the southern part of the Tasman Sea. So it means that winds are going to become a little bit more light and variable and during the day they're going to turn a little bit more northerly. So during the day uh, across the Bass Strait, generally northeast to northwesterly, 10 to 15 knots. Further south though, along the Tasmanian coast though, it'll be a little bit stronger across the northern parts of the Tasmanian coast um, and generally you know, northeast to northwest. But once you get to the southern part of the Tasmanian coast, um, it looks as though we'll still see the southwesterly winds. Wednesday evening, um, it's the same, same, but different story. Um, so again, we're still going to see those southeast to southwesterly winds um, in the southern portion of the Tasmanian coast. And as you'd expect at this time of year, you'll still see those uh, uh, afternoon and evening sea breezes. Um, and that means we'll see the south to southeasterly through Storm Bay and up towards the Derwent estuary there. Looking further ahead though, um, what we are looking at, particularly for the second half of next week and early in the new year, is we're keeping a close eye on the track of the low pressure system that's currently over the top end. At the moment, it looks as though that system is going to be tracking towards the Queensland coast <coughs> by Thursday evening, sorry. 
Um, and with that, what we can see here on this uh, comparison of a, some, a couple of different models and, and their mean sea level pressure analysis is that low could be pretty much anywhere along the Queensland coast and a variation in what kind of strength we could see in that system. Along the southern part of the east coast of Australia though, we are still seeing that ridge of high pressure from the high over the Tasman Sea. So we're still going to see those uh, generally northerly winds um, for, for the southern portion of the Tasmanian coast though, still going to be an issue as to if we're going to see those northwesterly winds or whether we'll see some southwesterly winds with a trough that's just going to pass to the south. <coughs> So on Thursday, generally northerly winds of, of some description, generally about 10 to 20 knots, but that could increase a little bit later. Sorry, I've got a tickle in my throat. Um, but further south uh, along the Tasmanian coast, it's generally southwesterly. Um, as we move into um, uh, Friday, we'll see that low pressure system start to head a little bit further south. Um, and that's where we'll some uh, strong wind warnings across much of the east coast of, of Australia there, depending on how that low tracks and its strength. So once we get into very much crystal ball territory, uh, we are still looking at where that low is going to be headed. So um, there's been quite a variety of positions and strengths of that uh, low. And you can see here in the top left corner, um, the Australian model has it been still quite strong. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Still quite strong um, and, and having quite a you know, decent easterly uh, wind to, to its south. Depending on how that uh, load decides to behave, the um, long-term outlook for particularly when you're coming back um, is going to be an interesting one. So I'd urge everyone to sort of pay attention to the forecasts um, going ahead, just because as we know, lows uh, can be quite tricky to forecast where they're going to be, how strong they're going to be and, and therefore what kind of impacts we're going to see for wind strengths, what kind of waves, um, as well as any rain and thunderstorm activity. So whilst we are looking at those uh, quite brisk northerly winds on, on Saturday and into Sunday, um, I would just uh, caution it to say that there is significant model uncertainty at this point in time and that if you are going to start to head back in, in the new year to really pay attention to, to the forecasts. Now arriving in Hobart, Hobart um, we are looking at fairly mild conditions over the next couple of days start to see um, some increasing sunny periods uh, uh, during the week and temperatures slowly warming up so that by New Year's Eve we're looking at uh, temperatures getting up to about 26 degrees during the day so quite lovely um, not much in the way of rain on the foreca forecast uh, particularly as that ridge of high pressure is the dominant feature. In terms of uh, sea surface temperatures and currents we are still looking at that uh, uh, well quite southerly component of the East Australia current between Sydney and Jarvis Bay Further south though, there is still a very weak um, aspect of a northerly current inshore um, between sort of about Jarvis Bay and Bermagui. Further south, we are still seeing the, the eddies offshore from um, Gabo Island and uh, off Flinders Island. So it's uh, an interesting one in terms of some of those currents. And uh, likewise, in terms of the tides, at the moment, the high tides are in the afternoon and in the early morning. We are going to see um, the high tides start to increase um, uh, during, towards uh, New Year as, as we get towards uh, uh, the new moon. So um, I think I might just leave it there with a little summary to say that we are going to see predominantly south to southeasterly winds throughout the race. Initially, we're going to see a shower or two today, maybe the chance of a thunderstorm offshore um, during the early part of this afternoon. And we are going to see those strong wind warnings in place today. So there's a chance that we could see those strong wind warnings uh, persist into the early hours of Monday. Um, on Monday, we are going to see those east to southeasterly winds develop uh, across the Bass Strait and we'll still maintain those southwest, southwesterly winds to the south of Tasman Island. <clears throat> um, and we'll see those turn a little bit more southeasterly. Um, sorry. And see those t winds turn a little bit more south to southeasterly um, through Storm Bay and up the Derwent um, as, as you arrive, um, particularly during the afternoon. Um, like I said, there is that uh, quite warm current um, fa fairly far south um, between Sydney and Jarvis Bay with a very weak northerly current inshore between Jarvis Bay and Bermagui, which is another one to be wary of. Likewise, um, for those that are going to be coming back um, in the new year, it's really worthwhile paying attention, paying close attention to the forecasts um, as we see that low pressure system from the tropics head further east and further south. And we'll see um, you know, a variety of different solutions at this point in time. Um, so it's something to be really quite mindful of as, as you go ahead. So I just want to say thank you and good luck to everybody. I look forward to, you know, tracking you as you make your way down south. And remember to just sort of uh, 
make, make sure you've done all of the vital checks before you head out, um, particularly on your way back home. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, Gabrielle. Um, looks like a, a pretty uh, normal subtly coming through for a Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race, and uh, but a very tricky uh, race for navigators uh, after the subtly moves through. We do have a question uh, to be answered, and I'll hand it over to the race committee chair to answer that question. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, Colin, and thanks, Gary. Great, great brief. And I uh, certainly note that the weather post uh, uh, the race with some coming back that would be a consideration in due course as well. But great brief. I've um, got a question from Chris about how we expect to receive results. Just want to restate again um, uh, if you've not received the results, you can start the race. Um, if you do receive your results in the race, then we request that you pass that to uh, Tara, our sailing manager, and the sailing office at the appropriate time. We don't expect you to be monitoring your phone the whole way down. Of course, that's going to be the least of your uh, worries in terms of uh, uh, focusing on your own safety and your own race. However, if you are in a position where you can receive mobile coverage and you do get that result, then that would be appreciated that you'd send that through as soon as practical. For most of you, I would expect if you do have your mobile phones with you, being on your own crew policy, that would be closer to Hobart. So we expect you know, if you get that uh, you know, positioning as you turn around uh, from uh, Tasman Island, and you start to get into range, please pass through those results when you have them. We don't want to create any additional anxiety for anyone. Um, we will work with you um, throughout this whole, uh, whole process. So I want to repeat though, if you've not received the results, you can start the race. But if you do receive the results in the race, then we need to know about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, as I see there are no other questions to be answered. Can I wish all competitors a great adventure as you head down south? I don't mind telling you, I wish I was out there racing with you, uh, but I'm looking forward to welcome you to welcome you all in Hobart when you arrive. Uh, have